Yo, let's head back to the 90s. That's one. Okay, two in a row right there. Three in a row, okay. Something different has to happen here though, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, okay. What happened with that last line there, right? You don't need a PhD in music to know that one of these lines aren't like the others, right? Well, imagine a multiverse in which there are parallel realities that are darker than their counterpart. In these realities, we have... Mm. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Don't start scrolling. This is good stuff here. Dude, really? The multiverse? Parallel realities? It's overdone. It's in like every movie. No, but I'm using the realities as a way to illustrate the minor mode. Come on, man. You're making it way too convoluted. But it's a clever way. No, no. You know what? Why don't you just tell us what we need to know? But... Nah, man. Really. Let's just get on with it. <sighs> okay. Okay. Fine. You win. You win. So, <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is explain the concept of what we call modal mixture. So, bear with me here. There are chords affiliated with C major. And there are also chords affiliated with its parallel, hmm? parallel minor, parallel minor. That's what it's actually called, okay? Parallel minor. So C minor is the parallel minor to C major, right? Simple enough, right? So in You Gotta Be, that is in the key of C major, right? But once we reach the end, once we reach to that section there, we are borrowing chords from C minor. It's parallel minor there, right? This is what we call modal mixture. And you can hear it too, right? Once we get to this part of the song, there's a significant tonal shift here, right? You can just feel it. And it's actually being brilliantly used in this song. I can almost guarantee you that the song will not be as successful as it is if they did not use the chords from the parallel minor. Look. Mm -mm. Right, listen to how weak that sounds, right? There's no emotion to the... Yes. Right, that has more of an impact, right? So how do we know when to use modal mixture, right? Where and when? How do we know when to use it? Well, there's no set rules, right? But I believe that modal mixture is the most effective when we reserve it for a significant part of the song, right? So even with this song with You Gotta Be here, we've established a pattern, right? And it's not until the end of the pattern in which we go out of the box here. Symbolically, it represents a solution to the conflict that is presented. You can even listen to the lyrics, right? You gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser, right? But it's not until we get to this part, all I know, all I know, love will save the day. That's the solution to it, right? And that's why it has so much of an impact. So, the next time you are writing your own music and you wanna give it some flair, consider using modal mixture by borrowing some chords from the parallel minor version of the key that you're in. But don't use it all willy-nilly, right? Make sure you reserve it for a significant part of your song. That way, it could be the most effective. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alpha Shepard. Let's make some music.